so yeah, as Mike said, we were chatting about this for a little while, and I have opinions just like most of you. And I decided, let me quickly write a blog post about this, which has far more content than this will have. I had to cram a lot of this into 30 minutes. But um, I've been doing this for quite a while, and uh, these are clearly my opinions on this. Um, so a little bit about me. Um, been doing ops for real long. Uh, feels like forever, but it's definitely not. Uh, pager, forever. As we all know, it could be pretty fun, right? I've uh, been contributing to open source for a while. Um, father to a very fantastic little guy. Tried to get them here today, but he was cranky, so that wasn't happening. Um, and one cool thing is, is that DevOps is, and SRE and whatever all these other things are, um, the, the term is thrown out there so much. So it's really difficult to understand what people are talking about and the different roles people are hiring for and all that fun stuff. So <laughs> interestingly enough, I, I love to field phone calls from recruiters and kind of take what they're looking for and then give them my 15 minute opinion. And usually at the end of the call, they're like, oh, this is, this is great, you opened my eyes. And 15 minutes later, I get another phone call about the same thing. So that's, that's, that's really fun. Um, so right now I work at Bloomberg, just as, as Mike said. Uh, I've been at companies previously, DigitalOcean, Sail Through, ideally a bunch of uh, startups here in the city. Um, and yeah, so just quick disclaimer. My, these are my opinions, just like this man here, probably one of the more one of the most opinionated people. Um, if you know who that is, well, that's Hunter S. Thompson. Um, and I've been a part of just so many different organizations in IC roles, in leadership roles, and um, this is just the information I've kind of gathered along the way. Now, this won't be for every organization. Uh, you could start off small, start off big, but there is really no definitive answer for how to implement this type of org inside of your, your current company. Um, this, it's impossible, really. Not impossible, but so here's all the fun terms that you've probably heard uh, over the time, right? You have SREs, tech ops, network DevOps, DevOps developer, senior DevOps engineer, production engineer, just kind of everywhere, right? All the different calls and all the different LinkedIn requests you get. Uh, these guys will come in and, and help make your company super fast and fix all of the problems, handle all the technical debt, and everything will be super fun. Incorrect, which is what I love to talk about. Uh, and tell people. So this is actually my son, right? I sat him down in front of uh, sat him down in front of the the next generation MacBook Pro and iPhone 8, <laughs> and uh, showed him basically what I do day in and day out. And he was obviously thrilled, um, which was which it's kind of funny, but he got real angry, obviously. Uh, but again, like one of the most important pieces to this puzzle, and I try to explain that the most, is that it's not about the technologies, it's not about the people coming in, it's not about all of the new wave of doing things. It's, it's primarily the, the organization really needs to focus on the cultural shift that's going to happen. And kind of if, if, if people start to understand that this, that this cultural world on bridging DevOps or ops and, and developers and that whole world. It, once that kind of starts to happen and click and the engineering culture becomes a much better and, and cleaner place and more welcoming place to work in, then the, these things could start kind of taking uh, form. So I want to talk about quickly like an implementation that we've been doing at uh, Bloomberg and, and what we're trying to do. So we're taking this massive organization, right? It's huge, 4,000 developers, thousands of applications. And we said, okay, well, how do we support all of this? How do we get everybody on the same page so we don't have the same people building the same thing across every team? I'm sure everyone has had that happen. Um, so I wanted to dive into kind of what SRE is to me and the, the numerous challenges around implementing it in different size organizations. So, what SRE means to me, right? It's a core group of individuals who have a wide array of skill sets. These skill sets can range from operations, uh, networking, um, development, hardware, distributed systems, all the fun stuff, right? 
Uh, they're responsible for building out and scaling all aspects of your infrastructure and kind of helping people really understand the right tools or the good tools that could fit and help uh, a certain situation. And then, you know, it's not about the just, it's not just about the technology, it's the mindset that the people think in and really always try to push that it, the cultural shift is just so important for people to understand. And that's kind of the, the current situation that we're working through at um, Bloomberg. And then, so you got the areas of responsibility that I kind of really want to quickly touch, which is monitoring, configuration, management, automation, core infrastructure services, tooling, provisioning, capacity planning, right? Because that's clearly important. Uh, performance, documentation, 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 um, <laughs> run books, and incident response. Uh, I'm not sure if I said documentation yet, but that is clearly very important because we all go into an organization and there is nothing. And oh, we have Wiki, we have Confluence, we write it on this wall over here, we have some napkins over here, but I mean, at the end of the day, nobody has any idea for half of it. Um, so I like to talk about application SRE versus infrastructure SRE. Um, as you can see, you have an individual staring into a mirror because technically it's the same thing uh, and it is the same person, just the roles and the responsibilities are slightly different for how we kind of, or how I kind of look at allocating these individuals between teams. Um, and the application SRE is someone who's allocated to a specific app team or specific service team and these individuals are kind of the one-stop shop for bridging the gap between infrastructure SRE and the development teams. Um, the application SRE, in my opinion, is usually very knowledgeable about the app or the service that they are working on, that they're assigned to. They could be a part of one, they could be a part of many. It, it, it all depends on the size of the org and kind of, well, size of the org and how many people you actually have running there. And that's kind of uh, important. Can't see my bottom notes, but fun. Infrastructure SRE, as you would assume, um, it's someone that kind of works on building out the core services, the centralized services. You're, you're monitoring, you're alerting, your Kafka, your HBase, Hadoop, building all of these bits as services and kind of offering them back to the application teams. And then the application SRE kind of works in the middle there. Um, so I want to talk about bridging the gap, right? Another very important item that needs to be accomplished when implementing this type of organization into a company is natively operations and development have always been separate orgs and worked in silos and this still happens today in most companies and that's one thing we noticed coming into this was nobody talks to anybody. We, we have, I, you know, we still have people that I meet brand new every day and I'm like, oh, you've been building that? That's awesome. We have that over here and, and this other guy has it and this guy probably has built it also and, and it's just, it, it, it creates a very difficult uh, situation when, when everyone needs to kind of eventually come together, right? So whether it's how the application is written or will be written and how it can be operationalized and, and everybody has skin in the game on this and we as technologists and employees and, and all of the other fun por portions of that, we need to bridge the gap and make this the, things just far more cross-functional and far more understanding um, between the teams and everyone should kind of help and be a part of the, the design process and the architecture reviews and the operational reviews and not just get a, an email saying, oh, hey, we're going live in, in two weeks and you guys need to figure all this out for us. So where to begin, right? Because everybody wants to be a part of this journey and, and Everybody wants this type of support within their, within their company. And uh, so how do we know what to do or, or who is who? Um, so I wanted to just quickly walk through a few of the areas where we could start to address the different aspects of, of SRE. We talked about application SRE. We talked about infrastructure. Uh, we'll go through some organizational layout stuff that we worked through. We'll go through some support structure for the outside teams that'll be involved. Um, in some cases, right, you have a lot of these smaller companies and your role will basically be all of this, right? 
it, you're going to have to do all of the work. But eventually, when you start growing, you can start breaking out a lot of these pieces, and you don't necessarily have to be the point person that goes out and tries to solve all of these problems for your company. So application SRE, right? Little, let's drill slightly more into this. Um, like I said before, these application SREs are embedded into different application teams, or not embedded, but available through some sort of chain of command, and they're available to multiple application teams. Um, the goal kind of is for us, is for the application SREs to spend about 70% of their time dedicated specifically to the application and service team, and then take the other 30% of their time and kind of assist the other areas of SRE in, in building out some of the, the core infrastructure, relaying some of the problems that they're seeing in the application world and say, hey, these are the problems that I'm seeing. These are the most consistent issues that we have across the board. What kind of a solution or what can we build to kind of centralize this and, and help multiple teams across the board? Um, now, these are rough numbers depending on the situation, right? Uh, but for us, it was a pretty decent guideline to follow. Um, we also want to make sure that the application SREs don't just become a dumping ground for the work that the app teams don't want to do, right? Like, eh, well, I don't want to automate this. This just thing constantly breaks all the time, and, and I've gotten a 1,000 pages for it. But they expect you to just sit there and, and field them and then try to go off and fix them and deal with all of the problems that they don't necessarily want to, and you don't blame them, right? But at the end of the day, we kind of need to fix that uh, ourselves. Um, so infrastructure SRE. Primary focus for us uh, that we have is really, or that I've seen, is really building out some of these core infrastructure services in, uh, inside of the, the company, right? Build and manage some of the core tech, a lot of the provisioning, OS, DNS, DHCP, networking, all of that fun stuff that is obviously needed, um, automation of the infrastructure, services, telemetry is huge. That's probably super important. Without some of the telemetry log aggregation and chef, you, I don't really know what you would do all day long. Like, what do you look at, right? Like, how do you know anything's broken? Like, if everything is just cool all the time, then awesome for you, but <laughs> that's not reality. So without these types of plumbing in place, for us, it was, it was one of the initial steps that we had to build and how we've had to build it in the past to kind of start even introducing, introducing this organization inside of uh, any company, really. I mean, these will be probably the most core components. Um, so organizational layout, right? I, I like to pick Homer Simpson school. The one thing is, like, I, the title is Narnia, but definitely don't have any talking animals in here. Um, somebody picked that up when I was going through the slides, and I said, oh, well, I'm not changing everything. <laughs> Uh, trying is the first step towards failure, and that's hopefully what most of us do is, because if we're not, if you don't fail at least once or twice, how do you really know if what you're doing is, is the best possible route? Um, so our, our organizational structure is something that kind of should be addressed when building out SRE. Um, now we have the application and the infrastructure SREs, but it is centralized. There is uh, a nice head of SRE that kind of controls everything. Um, and I'm going to show you a quick chart on kind of how we do it. Uh, the leads inside of these different teams um, could have multiple app teams, multiple infrastructure teams. They could be cross. It, it just all depends on the size and, and however you guys would like to chop things up. Um, that's probably the most um, important. So here's an example of, of how we have implemented uh, this initial phases of SRE. Again, it's just because it's surely the size and the mass of our company. So we have taken large amounts of infrastructure teams that we have focusing on services, uh, HBase, Hadoop, uh, Meso, just a ton of different things. And then we dove into the application side, and instead of going out and specifically saying, oh, let's hire these application SREs, again, it's very difficult to figure out and find and, and what the job spec should be, we actually dipped into the application teams and said, okay, who here is interested in kind of automating some of these things, fixing some of these processes, and kind of being a part of the overall infrastructure and operations of, of your, your service and your teams? And there was plenty of people that raised their hands. I was like, okay, cool. I don't have to write bug fixes all day long. Let me, let me go over here and try to fix it 
from a, from a different angle. Um, support structure. This, I have no idea who this guy is. It's just, it seemed pretty cool and he was super enthusiastic, so I picked the photo. Um, so the support structure for us is another very important item, right? We have thousands of applications and most people have, however many, it, doesn't, it shouldn't really matter, but it, we don't wanna bombard the, the, the teams with pages and alerts that are just, that's just noise, right? You're gonna burn people out pretty quickly and, and that's obviously not fun. Um, so now, if you have an, an infrastructure SRE working on building out some portion of a metrics cluster or building out any other centralized services that's going to take a lot of thought and, and lots of their time up. You don't, want to get, you don't want them to start getting pages in the middle of the night that, you know, port 80 on some random application that has no documentation just went down. And they're just gonna look at you and be like, oh, well, I'm probably not gonna do this. And your app may stay down or you're just really gonna make them angry and the next day they come in, it's going to be interesting. Uh, we've run into plenty of situations like that and it's unfortunately not fun. Um, so this is kind of uh, an example of how we've laid out, or how I've also laid out, um, building out some of these uh, support structures. Uh, so at the bottom, we have this really fun team called Frontline Support. Now, Frontline Support is, um, they handle a lot of the initial fielding of the pages. They do a lot of the incident uh, management. They'll document a lot of the common issues for us. They'll, um, they'll follow run books because that's important, right? If every alert should have a run book, that's just my opinion. If you have an alert in a system and it's just blank, I mean, that's not helpful for anybody. Um, so these guys are really, or these people are really the, the lower tier of the, uh, of the system, actively monitoring everything. They'll, they'll initially try to diagnose the issues and they'll, they'll take the common patterns and then they'll try to improve the run books because that's something that is very important because if they're on the ground, I mean, those are the guys that are really getting all of the, the main brunt of, of the issues. Um, so most of the time, the frontline support guys, people, will go directly to the application SRE teams. They'll kind of give them, give them this collective understanding of all of the issues that they've hap that have happened and, and that, the, that they've went through. And now, the application um, SRE team, here's where I kind of broke out some of the primary responsibilities that they would have on this uh, example web application team. Um, these are the, some of the main parts that they'll be covering, which is the performance tuning, release process, on-call scheduling. They'll be building the in initial monitors, the alerts. They'll be handling the database, the Rails, the web server, doing a lot of the best practices and tooling info. And obviously they have to have the application code knowledge because without that, they can't really assist uh, many people out, outside, of the, uh, outside of the team. And then they're in direct support with the application team themselves. And that's mostly most of the uh, areas in which the application team uh, controls bug fixes, application performance, testing, uh, and all of the other fun stuff that goes along with building out a service or an app. So now, I put, there's a skip between frontline support and application team where the infrastructure SRE is. So now, their direct support is to the application SRE team, and, and we've saw this to be much more helpful, so they're not trying to field information or alerts or pages that they don't necessarily understand of what's going on. So they're really responsible for supporting this overall random Ruby web application. The monitoring cookbooks, monitoring standards, capacity, database cookbooks, API hooks to the infrastructure, uh, best practices, OS updates, service and package updates, just all of the actual underlying architecture and infrastructure for running this fabulous Rails app that we all love today. Um, so yeah, so this is kind of what we've approached and, and how we've seen the, uh, the flow work out for us and, and it seems to work really well. And I think I went through that very quickly. Five more minutes, awesome. So that's all, so that was my quick 30 minute approach to kind of explain what random thoughts go on inside of my head, which is interesting. So it's just, this is my opinion on quickly implementing an SRE organization. I have a, a blog that I wrote that has far more information about it. 
I like to talk, so you could just come up to me and ask me kind of anything you want and um, what I think about it, so I'm sure everyone else has their own um, opinions on it. So questions, just some contact info. So yeah, you're out of time. Yes, so if anybody wants to talk, let me know. Cool, thank you, Anthony. Thank you.